Hey, welcome. It's Kurt Thompson, and I'm reviewing a breathing apparatus device. And originally, it's designed for patients that have had some type of surgery and they're trying to get their lungs back in order after anesthesia. But for us brass plane folks, and well, actually, I shouldn't be um, brassist, should I? Um, <laughs> Okay, let me not be brassist, and let me say that it's for all wind musicians, vocalists, and woodwind players, as well as brass musicians. So, for most brass players, now I'm not really going to go into woodwind players and vocalists, but for most brass players, to get the ultimate best out of your playing, especially in the extreme upper register, you have to synchronize three stages of compressing the air. The first stage is the diaphragmatic breathing. Breathing as deep as you possibly can and putting as much pressure on the lungs and diaphragm. That's the first stage. The second stage is the bottleneck at your throat and tongue arch. And you've heard band directors say, don't pinch off your throat. Don't pitch the air with your throat. Uh, well, they're absolutely ridiculous, and they're probably just regurgitating uh, what their instructor told them. That's nonsense. The only way you could not have a bottleneck and not pinch off the air at your throat would be if you were a dolphin or a whale. In other words, if you breathe straight up through the, a hole in the top of your head, then there's no pinching off. Um, but there's an L shape that happens when the air comes up to your throat, it makes a right angle and comes out your mouth. There's a bottleneck there, regardless of what your band director may say. There's a bottleneck there, there's going to be um, a resistance. That bottleneck combined with your tongue and tongue arch creates the second stage of compressing. And then the final third uh, third phase of compressing the air would be at your aperture. You know, if you have a big <laughs> aperture, loose, flapping your lips, um, or, you know, maybe, let's just say on a reed instrument, maybe you're using a Rico number one reed, and it's just um, soft, and you, you're able to have a, a lot of air go in at one time. Um, well, you're not going to be compressing the air as efficiently. So these are the three stages. And what these devices, I have several tutorial tutorials coming your way. What these devices actually work on is the first stage of compressing the air. The, for those of you who like analogies, the first stage of compressing the air is just like the principle of the jet engine. You know, the jet engine and the propeller plane are two different animals, right? Uh, you get a lot more power from the... Um, jet engine. The jet engine you can think of uh, scientifically blowing up a balloon and let it as, as much as you can before it pops and then letting it go and you remember you, you can see it kind of flutter around and go in circles around the room. That's the principle of jet propulsion and that's actually what our first stage of compression is. We're, think of our lungs as a balloon. We're inhaling to the max and maybe even beyond that creating this ultimate pressure that on its own the energy wants to come out through our mouth it wants to expel you know through our mouth that energy is what is one third required to get the best tone the best endurance the best sound the best control and the best range so it makes sense if you're a vocalist if you're a sax player, I would say even more so if you're a flute player, really, it would really make sense to work on this stage of compressing the air. So I have several tutorials coming your way. And this, I might just leave this introduction for all three tutorials. So if you've, if you've seen one tutorial, you might have heard this introduction. But don't worry, I'll be going into the particular details of the new device. So anyway, I'm Kurt Thompson. You're going to see me do some demonstrations as well. So it won't just be a speaking video with some pictures. You're going to see me demonstrate these devices. And right now, right now I have three devices in mind. So you might see 
a series of three videos on diaphragmatic breathing, inspiration, and improving your respiratory system, and the first stage of compression for any brass player, vocalist, or woodwind player. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. You are looking at the expand -a lung breathing device, and you're going to see me demonstrate this one. I've been using this one for years, in fact, uh, more than a decade. It really is the best device that I've used, and you're, you're going to see several other reviews on these devices, which are worthy, but this one is by far the best, and it really is quite amazing uh, what it can do for you. So anybody that has fun in music through their breath, whether a, a flautist, a saxophone player, a tuba player, um, or a female or male vocalist, uh, you're going to benefit by this one. Um, also, if you speak for a living or have to do a lot of public speaking, or you do voiceovers, you'll be benefited by this particular device. And then finally, it's actually marketed to athletes. So swimmers, Ironman competitors, triathletes, um, these type of folks. I guess it would apply to people that are weekend warriors, you know. You get out there and you play, you know, hoops you know, with your buds on the weekend and kill yourself. Or you're, maybe you're on a baseball or softball team, that kind of thing. Or maybe you do a lot of hiking or whatever. So this is um, the device that spans the gamut. It really does work. And for, there's, for most musicians, I've devised a way to do it that I think it works the best after so many years of doing this. And I don't do the blowout, the exhalation. Um, I only work on the inhalation, or as they say, technically, inspiration. So we're going to be working on that. You're going to see me demonstrate that. And this is a device that I mandate that people get when they're in my 16-week course. It um, really is a mandatory. It's not an optional thing because it really does make a difference. It's part of the first stage of compression. And if you can, let's just say that you have chop problems and you, you've done all you can to build up your chop strength and you've hit a wall, well, you, you, I'm gonna help you overcome that, but in the interim, you can be improving the other two stages of compression, which would be diaphragmatic breathing and the expanded lung concerns that, and the bottleneck at your throat and tongue arch. So there's a lot of ways to improve yourself and get around a few hurdles when it comes to your chops. And breathing correctly and syncing up all three stages of compression is mandatory. You must do that. So if you don't, you'll end up always having that strained type of sound and choppiness in your plane. Even if you do build up your chops, you'll you'll still have a choppiness and a strain to your sound. You won't have that effortless Bill Chase and Maynard Ferguson way of playing and sounding. So the expanded lung is an amazing device. And I have two ways that I do it, two ways that I've been teaching it now. I think, can I safely say more than 10 years? Yes, I have been teaching this to students now for more than 10 years. And uh, I'm sure they've gotten fantastic results, especially if they've been using it. I'm trying to go back to 10 years ago. Anybody that has been using this when I first start, started with this, if they've been doing it for a decade, they surely have really increased their lung capacity and the mechanism for um, inhaling. Now, by doing this, what you're going to be helping yourself out later, your older self, is you're not going to be one of these persons that walks around with that green oxygen container and the, the rubber hoses, you know, up their nose, you know? Have you seen those people? Um, they, they walk around, they, they have a cart, and they, walk, they wheel an oxygen container around. And uh, you're not going to be one of those. Typically, those people um, smoke too much, or maybe they were a coal miner, or maybe they worked around asbestos or something like that. Um, but um, 
I'm here to tell you that I don't believe in that. I think that if you work your lungs properly, like we wind musicians, that you're just not going to end up like that. You know, I'm also a firm believer in cardiovascular stuff. So extreme hiking, walking, running, jogging, biking, um, you name it. Uh, I think people that are involved in that during their lifetime are not going to be, you know, 80 years old fumbling around with a green oxygen container. That's just not going to happen unless you have the worst luck in the world and you're one in a million that happens to you. I just don't believe otherwise it will. So by using these devices, you can... Stack the odds even further in your corner that when you get to be an old timer, you'll be able to walk around and do whatever you want and you won't have shortness of breath. So let me go ahead and whip this out and show you how I like to do it. Please go over to Patreon, become a supporter, support my channel and my work and what I'm doing. I really need your help. Thank you so much. This is Kurt Thompson. <laughs> Expand along. Okay, now you're going to be able to watch me do some demonstrations with it. Kind of looks like a like a fighter's mouthpiece, right? Or a football player's mouth guard. I mean, minus this part. If you took this part off, it would look just like a you know a mouth guard. Okay, this is the one that I've been using for wow, uh, pretty much coming on a decade. I think. Personally, I've been using it longer than that, but I've been teaching this now for uh, a decade, since 2009. And anybody that got with me 10 years ago, I'm sure that no matter what they've done with their music, they've really increased their health when it comes to breathing. And that's, you know, basically, folks, if you think about it, when you die, you take a last breath and your heart beats for the last time. Those are the two, the two big reasons that you die. You do no longer breathe and your heart no longer beats. So those are pretty important, right? You take care of your heart and you take care of your ability to breathe. Uh, that might just tilt the odds that you live a longer and healthier life. So uh, this is part of that. Now this guy is amazing for the first stage of compression as I already alluded to. And I'm gonna put a link in the description. You really need to get this. If you're even halfway serious, let's just, let's just say that you just sing in the church choir. Um, you still should get this. I mean, it would really help out if you speak for a living or if you're upper middle management and you have to make lots of presentations and things like that at work, uh, this would help you out. People who do voiceovers for a living and um, any kind of musician that makes their music with their breath, be singers, vocalists, uh, flute players, bassoonists, oboe players, English horn, I mean, trumpet, tuba, you name it, the whole baritone sax. I mean, this guy is going to help you out. You're just not going to regret getting this. You're going to be very happy that you did. So I have now there's, there's, this comes with some directions and it tells you to both blow, exhale into it and then inhale. You can do what you want, but at least for brass players, we don't need anything else. Another exercise to blow because what that's going to do, is going to start to activate the chops and it might even become isometrical. So I don't have anybody that studies with me blow into this. We, we already blow into the horn, right? And we have other things that we do that just constantly work the face. I'm not focused on trying to get any facial activity, the musculature involved. I really want this just to focus on the diaphragm and the inhalation of the breath. And so uh, you heard in the introductory, now I made um, two introductions, one was specifically for the expand along that you've already heard. The other one is a general one that I'm putting on all the video tutorials regarding diaphragmatic breathing. And you, know, you already heard me mention the, the stages of compression, so I don't need to go into that. They are very important. And if you're sitting there one, wondering why you don't have a good range on your instrument, um, or why you can't get a great sound or a big sound, I mean, how many saxophone players I'm looking at you right now. How many saxophone players sound and play with a 
fabulous ferocity and energy of a David Sanborn. What's that? I'm hearing crickets. Cricket, cricket, cricket. Nobody. Hardly nobody. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to go listen to, let's say, five pro sax players in any kind of uh, situation, big band, uh, rhythm and blues, uh, let's see what else, um, uh, small-time jazz orchestra playing standards, um, you name it, um, smooth jazz, all five are not going to have the amazing ability and sound and energy of a David Sanborn. You just not. You just didn't develop yourself to that level. And part of it might be because of your breathing. You really need to focus on breathing and developing that diaphragmatic breathing. And it's even more so important for brass players because, uh, hello, we don't have an octave key and we don't have 12, 15, 17, 20 keys to get all our notes. It comes from our air and the manipulation of our embouchure. So that said, I'm trying to drive home a point. This um, diaphragmatic breathing is very critical. And a lot of people don't get that because a lot of band directors steered you the wrong way when they said, airflow, open up your mouth. Oh, 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 oh. They didn't understand that the warm, slow breathing, the uh, air coming out is not going to help you. That air comes out, all your air can come out in a second or two. <sighs> that wasn't even a second. There, all my air just came out. What's that going to help me do on the instrument? It's not going to help me do anything. You have to learn how to compress that air. And that's what your band director forgot to tell you, maybe because they didn't know themselves. This is one thing that's going to help you. It's one part of the puzzle. Three stages of compression. Uh, the expanded lung is the premier diaphragmatic breathing device. In fact, I was just noticing on the site now, they, um, the Navy SEALs are actually using this. So before, uh, when I first started teaching this, it was um, Ironman competitors and triathletes and long distance swimmers and runners and cyclists and stuff like that. But now this is, uh, I guess the reputation of this has gone so far around the globe and everywhere that it's come back to the Navy SEALs and they've tried it and they actually have their Navy SEALs candidates use this to improve their conditioning. So, okay, now the two ways that I do it, enough lecture, but this is important stuff. I mean, you really should be hanging on my every word. Um, at the very least, you can see I prove uh, what I say. I practice what I preach is another way to say it. And this guy has helped me out. I do this two ways. Now, there's a way to dial up the resistance. You may have noticed that this there's a black extension on the rubber part here you maybe thought well what is that if i get it close enough there you go you can see that this handle moves see that now what this does is it uh, allows a certain amount of air to escape and it will open up to um, letting the most air that will escape for this particular device or you can close it off to where nothing comes in and out so what i like to do is to um, play around with the resistance. So one way to, to do this would be to put a drag on your, a slight drag on your breathing, in your inhale. So that's all the way open, no resistance. And one technique would be just to exhale all your air and just breathe, all your air and just breathe in. And that's putting a drag, <coughs> excuse me, is really working. It's putting a drag on your inhalation. Or I guess, I guess in the medical community, they call it inspiration. So that's one way to do it. Now, another way I like to do is a short burst is to add some resistance. This is the second way to do it, is to add some resistance. For, let me just give you an example of what happens when you turn it all the way in. Can't breathe anything there. So what I like to do is dial it in and take several short bursts of inhalations where you really can't get that much air. It's pl placing a tremendous load on the diaphragm to pull the air down and create that low pressure system in your body where the air rushes in. There's a vacuum being created there. And this puts a drag on your diaphragm. It must compensate and get stronger. So here we go. Let me open it back up. 
Okay, so let me close it up a little bit and do the second way I like to do. Okay, you probably notice there's a reduction there. Now here's what I do when I have the resistance on. I'm being as dramatic and as energetic as I can and trying my best, like my life depended on it, to get as much air I can in that short little burst. So I feel like there's a different action happening on my diaphragm than when I just use little to no resistance and take one long breath. Both are good. I am convinced and I will guarantee you that if you get this and start working on it, it won't take more than a week for you before you start to go, wait a minute, <laughs> this thing really works. You will notice the benefit, whether your tone is more centered, whether your tone sounds better and richer and more vibrant, whether you're able to sustain longer passages, whether, you're, whether you have better endurance. And whether you're may, able to make your voice boom if you're a speaker and you have to speak to a large auditorium and you want your voice to carry out, this will actually do the job. I'm Kurt Thompson. There's a link in the description. I would highly recommend you get this and may, maybe pick up a couple for people you know that are involved in music and or speaking. Um, or if you have someone that's a crazy nut that likes to do those Ironman competitions, uh, uh, pick up one of these for them. Kurt Thompson here. I hope you enjoyed this very informative tutorial and it's going to be quite influential in what you do in regards to music. Uh, go ahead and like this. Look for that little red triangle, uh, rectangle down there that says subscribe. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can see the more videos related to this and diaphragmatic breathing coming your way. And if you feel so inclined, make a comment down below and maybe even a suggestion uh, for another video if you like. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.